chat to me after the meeting. We'll, we'll sort something out. So today we have Bernard from Bookwhites. No, Bernard from Bookwhites. Do you know what, I've been practicing. Bernard Bookwhites from BE Security Systems. And he's going to tell us all about how to fail in business. That's very exciting. So over to you, Bernard. He needs an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, John, do you want to read? 90% of all business fail, not because of a lack of good products or services, but because small business owners fail to sell. Too many small businesses owners hold their businesses back because they're reluctant non neg 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 on non-existent sales efforts. <laughs> okay, did you write that? John wrote it, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I had a big lesson there. <laughs> okay, are you the sort of person who does the same thing every day, every year, and expects different results? Yeah. A lot of people are like that. <laughs> you must be in Einstein. <laughs> yep, we're getting to Einstein, you've read my notes. <laughs> okay, 2 plus 2 equals 4, 2 times 2 equals 4, it will never equal oh. 5 or 7, always equals the same thing. Unless you're dyslexic. Unless you're dyslexic. Speak for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I've run businesses. I've had electrical construction, big construction business. I've had coffee shops. I've had restaurants. Started a security business. South Africa, arm response. Um, CCTV installation. Everything security industry. Built up to a very big business. I've made all the mistakes there are to make. I mean, I said to someone the other day, I've made all the mistakes. I said, no, you haven't. And I started going through a couple of mistakes that I haven't made. <laughs> I, I, did I did them. Okay, I worked for another chap in UK for about four years. I'll call him Fred. Um, he's been running the business for 25 years, very successful. Also security business, doing exactly what I do now. In 25 years, he has 200 clients. Four years ago when I started with him, he had 200 clients. He loses clients and he gets clients all the time. Why? His paperwork is shoddy. He doesn't send email invoices out. He doesn't keep in contact with his clients. All the golden things we should be doing. Okay. One of the biggest things I've found for myself, running my own businesses, getting out of my comfort zone. I used to be very scared of doing that. If I know something works like that, I used to stick to that and I wouldn't change. Okay. Gordon. Yes. Are you survival driven? Okay. What's your primary objective to having a business? Is it to get wealth or to put something back into the community? 50% of businesses fail within the first year. 95 will close their doors before they reach their fifth year. 40% of businesses are profitable. <coughs> these statistics I have to read. 30% break even. 30% are continually losing money. And 9% have a chance of surviving after 10 years. Okay, ways that we can get business growing. I found four networking works amazing for me there. You meet a lot of people. I've made fantastic friends at four networking. And I've had quite a bit of business through it. So, instead of just being survival driven, set yourself a goal and work towards it. Trees. Not planning is the key. If you fail to plan, you've planned to fail. Okay. Okay, now you have homework. <laughs> no. Okay. Are you focused? No. No. Good. Okay. Write down your plans. <laughs> what are your plans for success? You get to keep the paper, I don't get them. Waking up in the morning. A lot of people, that is a plan. Plan your goals. And your plan of action, how you're going to achieve them. Hmm. These are things I never did previously in business. Eventually, our people come in the business and they sat with me, so I think someone like Carol will do, and show you how to do things like that. Alright, Carol? Okay, while you're writing down, a lot of people, they have the problem, lack of focus. Now they want to be a jack of all trades. And now, go back to what Albert Einstein um, said. Genius is the ability to focus on one particular thing 
for a long time without losing concentration. Mindfulness. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, how are you guys doing with your list? <clears throat> you don't need to fill all the things in. That's good, because I only do two. I'll try to change them every day. I'm a business plan. I've got one in the workshop. It's on the whiteboard. It stays there every single time. Every time someone asks me that, I can never bloody remember. <coughs> okay, does anyone want to give me any ideas what they put down? To grow. Want my business to grow. Okay. Want to be able to give back more. Anyone else? Um, exceed expectation. Mm. Work part time. I'm looking to introduce Juice Plus to three new uh, prospective uh, distributors. Mm. Did you want, sorry, the plan, the goal, or the action? Whichever. Okay, well, my goal is to be the number one choice for therapist in Bucks and Bark. Mm. Good. Because then that's a specific achievement thing. Yeah. Rather than, oh, I just want to be successful. Yeah, my goal has always been to, num goal has been to achieve number one. And I've seemed to. I think each time I've done it, and then through stupid decisions, <laughs> lost everything. <laughs> okay. Mr. Accountant. <laughs> fear of failure. If fear of failure holds you back, you need to face that fear head on. If you're scared of public speaking, am I scared of public speaking? I hate it and love it. When I mentioned to Carol, um, planning on doing a foresight, I said, fine, I'll book you in. I said, no, not yet, when I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> what did Carol do? Fine, we're booking you in. <laughs> I've done it many times, but I haven't done it for 25 years. But I think it's lovely. You're enjoying it, huh? I am enjoying it. Yeah. Still nervous, but enjoying it. Great. Don't let fear of failure hold you back. Because the thing you fear will be the death of, death of you and the death of... Facing it will be the death of the fear. So the only way of facing it and overcoming it is just to do it. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Do you, do you know yeah. the, some of the most of the best actors in the world, if they, if they go on, on the theatre, on stage, they're scared every time they go on. Mm. I've been on, um, in movies, oh, yeah. a little bit of name throwing, Samuel Jackson, <coughs> Juliet Binoche, I've been with them. And at one stage, Juliet was fumbling over words. I was only an extra there, and... What was she probably going to do, sir? Her words. Mm -hmm. She just... <laughs> and she started again, started again. I said, Juliet, take a deep breath. How many people looked at me? I mean, you're an extra. You can't say that to them. And then she, she took a deep breath, and she carried on, and she did all perfectly. I joined them for lunch. No one ever joined them for lunch. Well done, Mike. Okay. Carol. Don't keep up with your paperwork. The most important thing in failing is... Running a small business, which is what I started as, um, you often think, well, people are going to pay me cash. I don't need to give them invoices. I said, okay, it's like 200 pounds for this, 100 pounds for that. A lot of people will pay you cash. It's not a problem. And then you forget about it. And a year later, oh, I forgot to go to John. He owes me 1,000 pounds. You go to him a year later, he says, but I'm sure I paid you. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get that money. What I've learned to do, my wife was actually saying this morning, we were chatting about it, um, that I've actually become, I'm getting quite good at it. Not I've become, not there yet, but most times I manage to, when I finish a job, I've got my iPad, I make an invoice out, before I leave site, they've got the invoice. Paperwork's all done, and I've started getting good at that. Okay, client won't pay you unless you invoice them. If you try to remember things without writing them down in a diary or whatever, you're going to fail. I used to have a piece of paper in my pocket, this pocket, whichever pocket. I'd get home, take my shirt off, my wife would put it in the wash, paper's gone. <laughs> Client would then phone me a week later, Bernard, you're meant to be here. <sighs> what excuse can I come up with? Bench, I used to say to them, I'm sorry, I forgot. I did help for a while, but people don't always appreciate. I had a chat with Vivek a couple of weeks ago. And we're actually talking about integrating everything together. I've heard him speak quite a few times. And for the first time, I actually understood the whole integration thing. I partially did it myself, 
But you look at what he does, I think it's awesome. <laughs> you can give me commission later. <laughs> okay, follow up on new customers. That used to be one of my biggest things. If our client had an inquiry, I'd phone them, and they weren't really showing too much initiative that they really wanted to do something. I'd oh, I'll call them later. Um, so if you get an inquiry from a potential client, customer, if you stay in contact with them, for how long? I believe until they buy or die. <laughs> That's my personal opinion, what I've found. Don't get an accounting program. Hmm. Okay. And let's go back to Fred that I used to work with. He did everything on an Excel spreadsheet when he remembered. Um, I loaded an accounting program on his computer. I set up all the information. I loaded all the data in. Two years later, I kept trying to get him to use it. He didn't use it. I ended up leaving the company when I was owed 28000 and I decided to start my own business. I know what I'm not going to do. Been in business now, again for myself, about a year and a half. Up until six months ago, guess what? Still the accounting program. No, I had the accounting program. I didn't use it. Didn't Never business. used it. No. <laughs> I had business. I actually had a little invoicing program on my iPad. I did use it for invoicing. Um, I had a free version, so you could do three invoices. So I just overwrite it and overwrite it and overwrite it. So and when I suddenly the history. I lost yeah. all the history. Mm. Well, unfortunately, with the iPad, when I emailed it, I did set it up to come back to me. So I did get it. Okay. So, number one, if you don't want to fail, get an accountant. Mm. There's a lot of online programs. I mean, I use QuickBooks. I think it's amazing. You can use it on your iPad, your iPhone, also on your computer. Mm. So everything. You can do it on my CRM system as well. We have a special oh. system for Okay, that. didn't know that. <laughs> okay, failure to embrace new technologies and new developments. If you don't, you're going to fail. It's all there for us. Use it. And it allows us to work more efficiently. Okay. Nigel. Get staff or a liability to your business, not NASA. Yes, you want to fail, do that. In South, I'm, with my business in South Africa, my father was German. So I learned something from him at a very young age. When you do a job, you do it properly or you don't do it. Um, I used to be very unfair to my staff. I expected 100% from them, but I was really happy with 105%. <laughs> If they ran the cable in the corner and went down and they cut the corner... I'd pull the cable off, make them start again on their own time. Okay. What I then started doing, taking on staff that had no knowledge. I had a couple of people that knew what they were doing, they were good. When we took on new people, instead of taking people that worked for other companies, I found I could train them within six weeks maybe. And they could be up to my standard. So you have an option there. Either use what you've got or take on new people and train them. Let them know what your standards are from day one. If that's your standards, stick to it. Don't go below it. How much time have I got left? About three, four minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. And I thought I'd do this in three minutes. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Poor money management. Poor money management. <laughs> okay. Being an entrepreneur means being able to do more with less. <laughs> Classify your expenses into two categories. Urgent expenses and important expenses. I used to find... And my wife still laughed about this morning. I used to look at my bank balance. Okay, I've got £3,000 in the bank. And I'd be making checks out. Not even thinking about the other checks outstanding to go through. And next thing, the bank would be phoning. What's happening with your account? You're overdrawn. I said, no, I'm not. And the one day the bank manager really phoned me. He was very angry because I'd really gone right over my account. I said, not a problem. I'll give you a check. <laughs> no sense of humour. No, what was wrong with him? <laughs> okay, <coughs> Mr. Printer. Oh, don't be accountable to anybody. Except okay, you, except your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been accountable to him. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. Do we waste time? Do we spend time wisely? 
That used to be one of my biggest things. I mean, I sometimes take a day off, and the day off I still work. Okay. Well, I've, I've had a lot of friends that have started businesses, more businesses, and I've sat with them and said, okay, I've drawn a list of things which they need to do. And once they started doing those things, it's made a big difference. Unfortunately, I didn't get paid for it. Okay. I then got them to full-time sheets in for themselves, which my wife says this morning, good, you need to do that also. I said, okay, fine. I said, all these things I'm talking about today, from tomorrow. We start. No, from tomorrow morning. We start every single one. Okay, full-time sheets in for yourself and evaluate yourself. There's a limit to what an individual can achieve. You need teamwork, you need other people around you. Entrepreneur on the path to destruction is the one who will never empower others nor seek help of others for fear that they might outshine him or her. That was my biggest fear. I wouldn't train staff enough that they could be better than me. I wanted them to be below me so they'd have to rely on me. Stupidest thing I ever did. Okay, great things are seldom achieved alone. You're not the only one that's done that, though. No? I think everyone has. And, okay, summarize. Good timing. Okay, we need to think out of the box, out of our comfort zone, or even throw the box away. There are certain things that work very well in the box. I look at full networking. I think it's a perfect box. Don't change it. Okay, stay focused. Don't be a jack of all trades. Back to Albert Einstein again. Genius is ability to focus on one particular thing for a long time without losing concentration. Fear of failure? Face it head on. Get an accounting program. You won't fail then. Get staff who an asset your business, not a liability. Money management. Urgent and important expenses. Time management? Be accountable to someone, especially yourself. Full time she's in for yourself and evaluate yourself and great things are seldom achieved alone. Great. Well done, Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions in the last thirty seconds? You like uh, getting an accounting program. <laughs> I've got database next. What are your CRM yeah? <laughs> to be number one? In what? On business. Mm. By when and what does that mean? Um, two thousand and fourteen. In 2014, mean? security. Wow. In South Africa, we started. I started from having a, my electrical business liquidated. Mm -hmm. Everyone said you can't start a business from nothing. I did it three times. Mm -hmm. Each time, I was through stupid decisions and trusting people, not having paperwork. Um, give the best service to clients was possible. Um, giving good prices. To me, um, clients will always refer you, whether positive or negative. So I try and go the extra mile. My phone's on 24-7, except when I'm in a network meeting, I put on aeroplane mode. So for two hours, they can't get hold of me. And I just try and stay focused. And my wife said, I always used to do something and suddenly, oh, that looks good, now do that. And now every time I do that, she says, Bernard, Focus. Okay. <laughs> Back on that. And that's me. Okay. Cool. Well done, brother. Yeah. Okay.